Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays in the American Tier 8 Premium Heavy Tank, the T-34 Black Edition. Now this is a tank that earns 75% extra XP because it's a Black Edition tank. Kind of helps with crew training and free XP and all that sort of stuff. And it's a tank that you can currently earn until the end of the month. It's like a 27 day earn up, but it's a completely random earn up. And that's because the drops are completely random. So what do you have to do to the, for this? Well, you only have to penetrate one shot. You can do it in World War II or Cold War, and you have a multitude of things that you can get from the drops. So you can get the Ag Tiger 88 Black Edition skin, or Black Friday skin, which, by the way, looks makes the tank look great. Or you can get a T-34 Black Edition, or you can get some boosters, some gold, and some key cards. Now, the thing is, it's completely random. So it's a random drop. It's not like... You can play 27 days in a row and you'll get one of each of every single one. You might get multiple gold. You might get multiple classified key cards or multiple other key cards. You might get the T-34 black. You might get the T-34 black twice if you're lucky, which means you get the T-34 black and then you get the silver for it, which is, you know, a big boon. But the thing is, it's completely random. So you might play the 27 days and not even get this tank. So be wary of that, that you might not even get it, Okay. Because it's like the Fatherland earn up that we had, what, four or five years ago? If, if you were around at that time, you'll remember the frustration of the Fatherland earn up. It was very, very frustrating, right? My friend got the Fatherland in 39 games because you had to get five medals, but the medals were completely random drops. So you got them at different rates to everybody else. So my mate got the whole the tank, all five, in 39 games. It took me 292. My other friend, who played nearly seven to 800 games, didn't even get the tank. He got four medals, and that was it. He didn't get the fifth, and he didn't get the tank. So obviously he was very, very, very angry at that. That's just how frustrating it can be when it's a random drop earn up. And I'm not a big fan of it, to be honest, because it just leads to frustration because it's like, well, these, all these people got the tank, but I didn't because I just got unlucky. Like, thanks, Wargaming, you know, that sort of thing. So just be wary that you can play the whole 27 days and you won't get this tank. But this tank was one of those tanks that would have been on my Power Crypt series videos, which I've released one of, which is the T-54 Mod 1. And the next one was going to be the IS-6. I had the IS-6 replays lined up. I was all ready to do it. And then a couple of days later, they went, yeah, we're buffing the IS-6. I was like, oh, well, this video is pointless then. And this was another one that was going to be on that list. But they also buffed the T-34 and the T-34 Black and made it pretty pretty nice to play these days. It's, it's pretty, what I'd say, caught up in the fact that it's now really... I mean, it was always a fairly capable tank, but it was just a chore. It was just a chore to play. And this was one of my, this was probably my second big tier 8 premium tank buy back in the day, behind the Super Pershing. So what did they buff on the tank? Well, they buffed the lower glacis armor from 70 to 101.6, which is, you know, insignificant, but it, it's nice. It helps it bounce a little bit more. They buffed the terrain resistance up, which makes the tank pretty decent over terrain now, which means you can actually get to positions a little bit quicker. It's a lot nicer. You definitely feel it. They buffed the whole rotation speed from 22 to 24. Little bit insignificant. It helps it a little bit. It's just a quite one of those quality of life changes. Roof armor went from 38 to 63.5, which helps it with overmatching. It means that you don't get 122 mil guns and 120 mil guns just overmatching the roof when you're on flat ground, which is nice. The commander's hat, sorry, the yeah, the commander's hatch armor went from 51 to 101.6, which makes the turret that even more little bit impervious, which is fantastic. Turret rotation speed went from 18 to 24 degrees a second. That's a big buff. Makes the turret rotation a lot nicer to use. Still use rapid aim because rapid aim will help that by 10% more. Buffs it up to probably like 26, 27, something like that. It's a lot nicer. Big changes. The gun went from 15 second reload to 13. Aim time from 3.2 to 2.7. Makes the gun so much nicer to use. It's honestly a real big help and the aim time 2.7 is great they also buff the frontal arm which is nice it helps it bounce a lot more and it's going to help it in this situation that you're seeing now so we've got to get to the cap we've got to get to the clap on mountain pass and reset we have to keep resetting because otherwise we are going to lose 
So we've got to this position here, and we're just going to side scrape off of this rock because we're we're a one shot for everything in the cap. Everything in that cap is going to kill us if we drive around the corner. So we're just going to side scrape, and as you see, we bounce something like the Tiger Two there. We get a nice shot into the Chinese TD again because. We just need to keep resetting. Obviously, we, we've started capping, and they've got three in this base. So we just need to keep poking out and getting shots. Now, they've all just fired, which means I can safely poke around and get a shot in. We reset the Tiger 2, and it's all about just defending this cap and keeping resetting until they lose by our cap, pretty much. So we managed to get a tracking shot into the Tiger 2. I wanted to reset the... Polish heavy tank, but unfortunately, like I said, Tiger 2 saved him. He needs to be reset, though, because he's the one with the cap points. We managed to reset it. It goes back up to 27. And we've just got to be careful on this rock. We've got to keep ourselves covered so that they bounce. Fortunately enough, the Chinese TD misses. Unfortunately, we bounce, though, because as he turns, he's got side plate armors that we can pen. And unfortunately, we just ricocheted off the back of it. He's turning, which makes that side plate armor easy to pen. We do shut him down. Now we've got 20 seconds left on, our, on the cap to reset. We've got 24 seconds before we cap. We've just got to get a shot into reset. So we go for the track to the 50TP prototype. I wasn't going to pen that 50T prototype, but I had to reset it, so I just tracked him. The Tiger 2, Yolo's round. Unfortunately, well, I say unfortunately for him, fortunately enough for us, he misses. And now we're going to back up behind this tank to give us some cover. Fortunately, again, the 50TP misses. The Tiger 2 bounces, and we cap for the win. So we just about missed the chance to kill that Tiger 2, but we managed to win the game there. Me and the team coming in to sacrifice the hit points to be able to keep the game reset. And we finished with the Ace Tanker, the High Caliber, the Confederate Medal, 2.1k base. Really nice game for the T-34 Black. And that showed what the DPM buff has done for this tank. Because previously, this tank would have struggled in that scenario because we wouldn't have been able to keep the gun firing as quickly to keep the reset going. Add to that the fact that when we were pulling around the corner, the aim time buff helped us as well because obviously it was 2.7, not 3.2. So we managed to get aimed in on time a little bit quicker and expose ourselves a little bit less to be able to re-get the resets in. The buffs on this tank have been massive quality of life changes for it. The tank is so much better now than it was. It's not left behind anymore. It's not really power crept that much anymore. I think it's caught up to what it was, what everything else has become. It's definitely a lot nicer to use. And I say you guys might be able to earn it, you might not be able to. Earn it. It's frustrating earn up that it is. So, in terms of the crew that I run on the tank anyway, now we've got past the hectic bit of that last game. I run Born Leader. Rapid reload, sixth sense, situational awareness, steady aim, snapshot, run and gun, trap mechanic, and rapid aim. Now I say, because you've got up to, like, what, 24 degrees a second on your turret traverse, it's a lot nicer now than it was, but it still needs a little bit of help. So you want that 10% extra on the turret traverse, because that way you can be able to get the gun on target a lot quicker. Also, you want all the gun perks, because... Just making the gun better on a heavy tank like this is definitely what you want to do. Now here is where the penetration on the T-34 Black is really nice. The Diamondback is a very awkward customer to pen. And fortunately enough for us, we kept managing to go straight through his lower plate and shut him down. And that Diamondback really showed the necessity for running optics and situational awareness. Because quite clearly that guy didn't have coated optics or situational awareness because he just didn't spot me. If he had those, he probably would have done. Because I was well, he was well within my detection range, and I was firing every time and pedding him and not getting spotted. Remember your situational awareness and coated optics, kids. It's in, it's vital importance. Now we're pushing down the two line, and unfortunately we hit the building and don't get to finish off the artillery. Unfortunate moment, but it is what it is. And we just got to be careful with this two line push because if they they've overwhelmed the hill, it's going to be a bit of a struggle. Because, well, we're going to get spotted and shot in the side. So we come along here. We see if we can get a shot in the dragon. We can't quite get the shot in. And we do get shot from the hill there. But I'm pushing up to these buildings because I know I can spot it if I get close enough. Now, it is at IS. And I know that I can pen in. So I'm going to side scrape out. We're going to get a shot in. In fact, he's firing HE. So he only does like 60 damage. So we get a nice pen into him and take 40 damage in return. And I knew there was heavy tanks down here. So I've just been a bit, little bit wary. But it is a Tiger P. Tiger P's... 
great tanks to shoot at because they've got cheeks that are easy to pen and a cupola that, again, is pretty damn easy to pen. Now, awkwardly, the artillery is down the bottom of this G-line, which means that me staying hull down against this Tiger P is not going to be that good because... Yeah, he's just the artillery is just going to loop shells over and possibly hit me. So I just think, you know what, okay, I'm just going to take out this Tiger P. I'm going to risk the chance of taking a hit just to get rid of the Tiger P so I can get into a position to shut down the artillery or not just have to sit in the open enough. So luckily for me, the artillery hasn't decided to run, so we get a shot snapped into him and he gets finished off. Now right here, I could probably get a shot at the heavy tank and I'm just looking at it. And I looked at the I looked at the map and it's like right that we've got three guys back there. They should be able to deal with the heavy tank back there. So I just need to get rid of the ball sig and the iron rain that was spotted down here. Because I don't want to go back and help my base, help my guys out where who outnumber them clearly at the minute, and then get shot by an iron rain or a ball sig in behind. Now I don't know how we missed that shot on the artillery. And I'm thinking, right, I just need to get rid of these guys. We've got the H E round in. I know I can finish this ball sig off with the H E round. We we'll pop around the corner, finish him off. I had to play ballsy there. I was unspotted, so I was just hoping to catch him out and get that shot in. And we managed to finish him off, luckily enough. We get rid of the artillery now, and we have to keep going. Because like I said, we spotted the Iron Rain. The Iron Rain was coming through the gap on the H line at H23. And I didn't want to sit and play cautiously, because that Iron Rain, like I said, could just come up behind us, catch us off guard, drop his clip and finish us off. We had to be aggressive. We had to be quick about it. Because he was chasing us. And we don't want that. So now we're going back on the Iron Rain. I'm expecting the Iron Rain to think I'm coming down the K-line. So I'm just switching around. And in fact, I actually thought that the Iron Rain might have just decided, you know what, I'm not doing that. I might have gone to help attack our guys. Unfortunately, our guys that were defending the base, most have perished. And we've just got this Iron Rain. I, I do need to get back to defend the base. But this Iron Rain, again, I cannot leave him alone. Cannot leave, leave him alive. We have to get rid of him. Because, let's like say, if I leave him, he's just going to come back and haunt us later with his clip. Which is, is just a dreadful... It's just a dreadfully horrible tank to face when you are low hit points like this. Because you might get a shot into him. Or you might miss. He'll just go bang, bang, dead. And we don't want that. And for, if, if he got fortunate enough, he could probably high roll and kill us as well. But yeah, now we've got to get back to defend the base. There's a Ferdinand Dragon and an E50. The Ferdinand is the one in the cap because the E50 and the Dragon are still alive. Now we've got the two artillery at A2 and we've got the Udes on A2. The Udes Alt 5, I need him to do his job and help, help out here. He manages to shut down the Dragon, which is great. And to be honest, I couldn't have held this game without that Udes because otherwise I would have had all the attention on me. And it's, they've managed, he's managed to do enough to hold that bottom flank. And we spot the Ferdinand in the cap. So we get a nice shot through his side cheek there. The Ferdinand is getting a buff, which is going to make it a little bit harder to pen that cheek. But not much harder, to be honest. It's still going to be a weak spot. And he's we're now side scraping out because he penned us with the first shot. And we don't want that because obviously he can finish us off. And with the side scraping we're doing here, we've managed to just bait his shot into the back end of our tank. And we've managed to take most of his hit points. We've managed to defend the cap. And, yeah, we're just going to aim and make sure the shot goes in. And we finish the Ferdinand. We just made use of his weak spots there. Fortunately enough for us, he sat still in long enough to be able to take most of his hit points. And we got to shut, shut him down. So, like I said, we couldn't have done that with the, uh, the Udez Alt 5. Because he managed to hold up this E50. He managed to shut down the Dragon. And they've managed to pin the C50 into the corner. And we're now at a point where we can win the game. And I'm just hoping the C50 is facing the Udez. I imagine he is, because I'm unspotted and the Udez is. And fortunately enough for us, as we come around the corner, he is looking at him. We come round and finish him off. And we finish with a great total. We finish with 5.9k damage, 1,100 assistance. We also finish with 8 kills and 2.5k base, which is great. So yeah, we finished with the 8 kills, 6k damage nearly, 7,000 combined. Pascucci's medal, Devastator, Radley Walters medal, High Caliber, Top Gun, 2.5k base XP, and a great game for a tank that is definitely a lot better now since they buffed it, and is a lot nicer to play. The buffs really have helped it a lot. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I hope you get lucky. See you next time. A great success!